Good morning, Paul. Good morning. So we're all turning into houses now, I hear. <coughs> yep. <laughs> yep. But God forbid that it would be called Clubhouse, right? <laughs> There it is. Oh. Yeah, how are you doing? I'm well. I've been very, very busy. I had uh, events in every morning, so it is uh, last week. I couldn't make it here, so wonderful to be here. Well, take good care of yourself. Think good things, yep. feel good things, eat good things, right? I am indeed, and I've been practicing my NLP from Rex's great course. So, hi, Antoine. You Welcome see how the, the my friends has changed the interface? Sorry, Paul? When you invite friends, does it even change now? Yeah, I'm just looking at it, and it's just it, it has changed. So mm -hmm. interesting, hey? Yeah, I'm just looking at that and how we even invite. Okay, so hmm. interesting. Huh. I didn't have to invite Mark. He's usually pretty prompt in here. Let's see. Yeah, I can't bring him up, so you'll have to do it, Paul. Can do. Oh yeah, because I know what I got to do. Oh, that's okay. Whatever. I'm fine with whatever. <laughs> it really doesn't no, matter. I, I hit my fingers just kind of. Yes, wait Paul. You need to people I, other people more. Mark, Mark. Yes. Do you know how to use Clubhouse? When you do certain things, you can't get back to the room until it tells you it's ready. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, just chill. So it's interesting now, Paul, that when you go back and forth, um, yeah, it's interesting how it's changed. I think it just changed last night, I believe. Hi, Mirage. Hey, Mark. Well, I guess. What happened? Because Something wrong with them? No, it's just changed. Anyways, we're just uh, inviting lovely people to this room as we begin. Thank you, everyone. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, hopefully today, Paul, I get to be able to help support and be able to read. I'm super excited. Hey, Ammer. I love that Ammer's here. You can do anything you want to, my dear. Awesome. Well, I love to bring the positive energy because I've missed everybody, but I still get those wonderful, excellent emails every morning from Rex's blog post. So, you know, that's the cool part. Even if you're not here, you can still have the opportunity, the invitation to read that beautiful blog and then take and focus. And again, you'll have to redirect me, Paul, if we're still doing t focusing on the message, not the messenger. So I'll let you lead that because I'm not quite sure. Well, that thing, I don't know. Rex has sort of said that's not really the, the, the point because it's more about awareness, you know, than, than fascist practice anyway. Oh, good. You know, because if we talk about what I'm going to do, you know, today, for instance, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But it's just the idea that you can tell when someone is so self-absorbed that they can't engage in anything else. So it's kind of like a, a Zen um, kind of thing to think about to kind of shatter those those paradigms if they are there. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I want to invite, hi, MD. Thank you for being here today. Uh, Ahmed, thank you. We are in Rex's exceptional Life on Your Terms clubhouse room, soon to be eventually turned into a house because we're all going into houses, as we all know. And today we're talking about how to stop getting what you don't want. I love that. So we invite you now to click on the link above and have a read and uh, yeah, let it percolate within you and then come on back and share what, what you have found from that excellent blog post. And this will be exceptional, an opportunity. So we're just inviting people. Thank you, uh, Antoine. Hello everyone in the chat. We appreciate you. And let's, again, invite people to this exceptional room and we'll continue in just a moment with reading the blog post. All right, we'll keep inviting over to wonderful Paul. And... Good morning, Rex, and good morning, Deanna. That was wonderful. There we go. Okay, so we are in this moment that's continue to share out, share on Clubhouse, because as we know, the houses in this new algorithm are gaining a little bit more attention. So we need the focused intention of bringing all the lovely people who are meant to be here today 
hit share now and say join us and learn as we like to do join us and learn now okay Ooh. perfect thanks everyone Ooh, good to hear your voice how is Sandra. everyone hi deanna sorry please go ahead deanna good morning oh i was just saying good to hear your voice sandra hi <clears throat> Hello, 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 bringing some positive energy to this wonderful day. Hey, Marcus. Hi, Antoine, MD, and Amr. And we are just setting up. We're just inviting everyone in, and we're going to invite you to go to the blog post above. You can always go to www.gratitudeactivator.com. And just, it's free. It's this beautiful gift that arrives in everyone's email who signs up for this free blog post. Rex has been doing this for over 14 plus years. It's exceptional. It really is. It gives you that invitation to delight yourself in new ways. What can you do that's new? What's good in order to move your life forward? And today's topic is on how to stop getting what you don't want. So I'm excited about this blog post, Paul. So if we are ready, you just let me know, and I'd love to be able to read for everyone. Thank you. All right, so why don't we do this? Um, Paul, I'm not sure if you're able to take the, uh, you want me to begin the, the blog post? Oh, reading? sorry, it's just when I'm, when you're doing a sharing in the room, the mic's off, and so I, I have to keep sharing or I lose it, or I, you know what I mean? But I'll, I'm done, I'm back. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So shall we read the blog post, my friend? Whatever you feel like you want to do. You're not here as often as I am, so you get to choose. Okay, cool. All right. Well, why don't we do this deep breath in and we'll continue to invite as you have this opportunity. And let's read the blog post together because that's always the wonderful opportunity here today because we want to be purposeful, intentional with this opportunity today. So please click on the link above and let's go to the blog post. All right. Ah, so good, so good, so good. All right. How to stop getting what you don't want. If you are seeing, again, I repeat, if you are seeing what you want to avoid, if you are looking at problems, you are steering right into them. If you are looking at what you want to get away from, you are missing out on moving forward. You can't get ahead looking behind you. You don't escape the bear chasing you by turning and looking at the bear. You must look where you want to go to move to get there. At times, people accidentally crash their cars into another. They call, pole, a tree or wall because they inadvertently aim at what they want to and must avoid instead of aiming towards safety. They freeze. They lock their attention onto, oh no, what they don't want to hit, and then they hit it. Why? Because energy goes where your attention goes. Typically, you walk in the direction you are looking in. During the race car driving, they teach drivers to look or aim away from the wall. They have you practice going around the course and then driving towards the wall. To not hit the wall, you have to force yourself to turn your head away from the wall and look to the center of the track. That is an area of safety. You turn your eyes and head away from the wall and it makes it easier excuse me <clears throat> and it makes it easy it makes you steer away too it really does it causes you to steer towards safety yes it seems counterintuitive 
It requires training. Training requires correct practice repeatedly for long enough to get people to look away from the wall. It doesn't develop as a skill overnight. It requires rigorous effort. You must make it a reliable habit. It must become the first response to survive. Look away from the wall. You aim towards safety by looking away from the wall. Most people look at the very thing they don't want to run into. This is true of most everything. We don't find peace focused on war and violence. We don't find love looking for hate. We don't run our brains for success focused on fear or and failure. We don't find happiness complaining about what is wrong. We don't find wealth worried about bills. We don't solve problems by focusing on and reliving the problem. We must turn our attention toward what we want in order to get what we want and not get what we don't want. Understand this? You must turn your attention toward what you want and maintain your attention there in order to get it. You become what you think about most during the day. You must stay focused on what's important to you and not get distracted by events and less than glorious results or circumstances or others. Keep your focus where it needs to be. Aim towards what you want and keep your focus there. Don't compare. Let go of fear and doubt. Stop checking your progress and develop the certainty you are moving ahead. Yes, be available for feedback. You aren't to travel blindly but keep your focus on what you want to create for yourself. Aim away from the wall and aim towards what you want. Aim at what you want. That's how you end up getting it. As I just wrote, what you think about most often is what you get and what you become. Become that kind of person for whom manifesting is easy, fun, and effortless. Don't you know, I'm here to help you. Visit my website and enroll in a program, Celebrate Everything, Rex Sykes. Hey, welcome everyone. Hi, Jane. Hi, Sladjan. And hi, Amr and Antoine and Kachel. Thank you, everyone. Great morning. Back to you, Paul. Where I'd love to be able to hear others. I'm open to whatever. Well, thanks for that, Reed. You know, what stands out to me is the re-awareness of completely positive.
For instance, if I may use an example, if I said, hmm, no one pays any attention to me when I want them to, and I'm really tired and sick of it. That's why I'm going to be focusing on improving my situation. What I've just done is beat myself up and then saying I'm sorry and giving myself roses. And we know that's not a good way to be. Oh, sorry. Oh my God, I'm a, a frog. My apologies, everyone. I was just sharing, sharing this lovely room. And thank you, Paul. That was absolutely exceptional. So again, I apologize for my little throat clearing today. <laughs> All right, Miss Deanna, I'd love to hear from you or Marad, Mark, who would like to share now? And this invite everyone who is here, this bring this beautiful energy. Hey, Michelle, thank you for being here. We are talking about how to stop getting what you don't want. Yes, make the choice. Let's do this. So please hit the lovely link ahead and read it and invite yourself to this opportunity today, now. Whew, it's so powerful. You know, this stuff really does work. I love it. So who wants to share? Miss Deanna, what is your thoughts? What's your takeaways? What are you going to do today that is new, that's good, that's your heart is being compelled, reminded? What are you going to do? Over to you, Miss Deanna if you're able to share. And I'm not sure Miss Deanna is able to share. Okay. Hey, Calvary's in the house. Good morning, my beautiful friend. Let's get you up here. All right. Invite to speak. Right. That, was a couple, that was a couple screens away. Nope. No problem at all. Thank you so much, everybody. And I love that Calvary is here. Good morning, beautiful and dear friend. Miss Deanna, what are you taking away today from this wonderful invitation? Over to you. I like bringing to my attention that you have to do it. The, the word rigorous popped out to me because um, just do it until it, do it till it sticks. <laughs> do it till it sticks and you don't know how long it's going to be. So you just do it till it sticks. And that. Um, but specifically, I think today it will be um, hmm, my exercises. I've been a little less intentional about my exercises this week. And um, so the consequences of that are not going to irritate me anymore because I'm going to be more rigorous about what I want for my body. Yeah. Thanks. I love that, Deanna. That is so beautiful. And the focused intention, isn't it? So let's all bring in this positive energy today. Let's invite ourselves in. I'm just really feeling this wonderful energy, this positivity. And yes, you know, we're all having these moments and just live in that present moment, isn't it? And then if we find ourselves, because we are resourceful within us, aren't we? Just look inside now. We have resources. We just have to tap into our beautiful resources to support ourselves in those moments if perhaps our energy drops. And what you're saying is, I'm going to refocus. I'm going to, and this is what the blog says, we are going to focus with that, really that intention. That's the word I have from this moment. Yes, intention. And it's okay. Yes, it's okay. If we have those moments where we have less, as Rex says, less than glorious thoughts, perhaps we fall off the wagon or we bump into a wall, like it says, if we're driving our car, that happens. It's how you look at that moment and how do you reframe it? So this is a beautiful opportunity and I wanna keep this going. So again, the invitation, go to the beautiful article and read it and then wrap it around you and say, hey, what is speaking to me today? And I love it, Mr. Paul, I see- Well, I got inspired you, by Paul. something you said, something Diana said to do something even cooler with my application today. To the theme of always looking at what you want, well, I've done some of that 
In other words, my obsession, my happy obsession to move to Amsterdam. When I sit up in bed, the first thing I see is a giant seven foot wide Dutch flag. On the wall is an eight foot high map of Amsterdam. All around my workspace, my music space, my bathroom, everywhere I've got Dutch flags and other trinkets. Now, the thing is, when I first put in there, I noticed them. I was like, yeah, yeah. And then over time, of course, I don't notice them in the same way. So I'm going to go back. And when I notice my eye scans anywhere and I see another trigger of the thing that I want, I'm going to pause and maybe put on one of my favorite walking tours of Amsterdam and hear that sound at the same time and maybe kind of close my eyes and maybe start to walk and look at it and get a deeper emotional connection to each one so I can reinvigorate the things I've already put in my life to give me those happy triggers towards what I want. Not just notice them now, but go back in and really emotionalize and feel them deeper. That's inspiration from the article, but also from two things you guys said. Thanks. I love that, Paul, because what did yeah. you just hear again? Woo-hoo, yeah. What did we hear? We're going to come to Kavri and Mark in just two seconds. And I want to invite everyone. Thank you for being here. Hey, Renee. Thank you for being here. Michelle. Michelle, I hope I said that right. Sladge and Jane, Ammer and Antoine. This remember always in this wonderful algorithm of Clubhouse. Continue to invite, share on Facebook, share on Twitter, because this is a powerful room. I love coming in here. Even if I'm not physically here, I can still be here. I can invite myself in because I've signed up for that free blog post. Yep, every day I've got that blog post zipping in to my email and I go, hey, click open read invitations there. So if we find those moments where we're less than resourceful, that perhaps our thinking, our words are not, excuse me today, directed where we need them to be, guess what? Go within shift it, stop, and then focus again. That's why I do the email. I read that email every day. So why don't we do this, everyone? And I want to, again, with this invitation, let's share collectively on Clubhouse. What is that one word in the blog post that we could all share? Focus, focus, focus. Thank you, everyone. All right, so I'm going to turn this over to Paul. For just a second, I'm going to go and just have a little sip of coffee so that my throat is not clearing with everyone. Over to you, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, I'd like Happy to. Happy to. Yeah, just keep it around because um, let's see. We actually, Mark, if you got a minute, think about what this article is suggesting. The idea of only focusing on what we want, you know, increasing, increasingly, and looking towards, etc. What from that kind of jumped out at you as something you might you might apply today? Love to hear it, dude. Yeah, well, I know exactly who I am, what I want, what I have to offer to life, but I need your help to you know how to reframe something very important because I'll never want to talk about this again. I want, well, to, I know exactly the kind of people I want to attract. I attracted lately a month ago a guy who owns a private jet, but it made a big scene in the room a few times and uh, Kavri was there, so she's a witness of that. It's that when I say, I just want to meet an homosexual man, I have to specify all the time, and I don't want to talk about this. I don't know how I could reframe this. Not part of the gay movement, the gay scene, the gay cult, you know, just a very regular uh, homosexual man who loves men, that's all. Who's not part, but uh, is not taking part, taking that lifestyle. So. Then it made a big thing, and the per- when the person that was concerned took it as an insult, my my goal was not to insult him, but and so they, finally it's not working out. And people like that. Well, that's Diana. I talked about that this week. Diana told me, Mark, now, and it's true, Diana. I'm so grateful for what you told me that to uh, visualize a guy that I'm sharing the same core values and, you know, is going to appreciate me with Ram and my perfume and everything. But when I'm in public talking about some people make the difference and some people do not understand at all. I cannot be responsible for the narrow uh, brain, you know, but it's just that I don't want to talk about that. I am not gay. I don't identify myself to those people and I don't want to hear about that milieu there, you know? So how should I reframe this when I'm talking about what I'm looking for? Because for me, it's so clear and 
so what? How can I reframe that? I'm not part of the. I'm going to jump on in on you, Mark, and just say this isn't a self-help group. We're not here to give you advice or suggest. This is for you to find out. This is for you to discover. That is the most important thing. We can tell you what to do, and you will or won't do it. But when you hit on it, you will hit on it, and it will make sense. In this room, and in the blogs, and in the articles, and in everything I've ever said or exchanged with you, I said. If you stop talking about what you don't want and what you don't want to create and start talking about what you do want and do want to create, then then even in the blog today, how do you how do you aim away from something? You aim towards. That means you talk about it, you think about it, you feel about it, you behave about it, and you exclude the rest. And here you're asking for help and you're saying, I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want this, I don't want that. I know myself very well. I know so it's up to you to find it, sir. It is up to you to apply it. You take something from the blog and go. You know what? Today, I'm only going to talk about the kind of people I want to attract. I'm only going to talk about this and that and the other thing. It's becoming too obsessive, sir. And I love you, Mark, but it's becoming too obsessive. It's it's the same issue over and over and over again. And the bottom line is, we cannot help you. Yes, we can give you advice, and yes, we can tell you what to do and steer you in a direction. But unless you move in that direction, sir. You won't go in that direction. So it's up for you to turn your head away from what you don't want and not ask or us how to help you do that and to turn it away and aim at what you do want and then focus on that. You're, you're a beautiful, wonderful human being who has so much to offer and you, you, you seem to get caught in this repetitive cycle. And this is why if you always do what you always do, you always get what you always get. And you, you continue to reinforce the very things that you say you want to change. So I'm, I'm, I jumped in because I want to point that out. If you want to reframe it, reframe it. And what does reframing mean? It means assign a different value or a different meaning or a different cause to it, you know, so that it works for you and it works for what you're trying to accomplish. But to ask us to tell you how to reframe it doesn't, doesn't do you much good. That would be a reframe I would use for myself or Deanna might use for herself or Paul or Sandra or somebody would use for themselves. But until you find the one that works for you, it's not going to make much difference. So the first thing you have to do is stop saying I am better than anything and everything and all of this stuff. And I know everything I want because apparently you don't. I don't know myself. I mean, I don't know anybody who knows themselves completely. So but you're on that path and that quest and you're an amazingly incredible person. So if you take that energy that you're applying to what you said earlier, I know myself, I know this, I know it. Then and then just do it. Do it toward the goals that you want. Do it towards the relationships that you want. Do it to the way you want to live your life. Because if you're attracting people who you don't want and they're having conversations you don't want, you're creating that. You're <clears throat> responsible for it. You're engaging in it. You're looking for it. You're finding it. Whatever, whether whether you know whether you're actively doing or not actively doing. So now actively do something that that works in your behalf, and you'll be so far better off. Because you're you're. I would say you're so close. But but you don't realize how close you are. So I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop talking now and, and encourage you to just look at what it is that you can think, say, and do that would promote the very things that you that you desire the most, and then do that thinking and that speaking, especially the speaking. Because if you keep talking about what you don't want, it's just the same today as yesterday as the day before the day before. You have to start talking about what you do want, not as if you don't have it, but what you're going to be doing and how you're going to be doing it and what you can apply or what you you know are noticing or what you're grateful for in, in seeing yourself move into this new area for yourself. And with all due respect and love, Mark, I, I pass the mic. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to be only talking about, because I'm never going to go back on that subject. I'm going to always say, I'm looking for a very high class gentleman who is homosexual and I share these kind of, well, I know my values that I'm looking for. And that's it. Not talk, never about, well, that eliminates well, automatically can, all the gay I'm going to jump in one more time. Sorry. Instead of looking for it, imagine having it. But instead of looking yeah. for that person, you need to be the person you want to attract. So it, it, instead, you know, it's kind of like a lot of people say, I don't want to, I don't want a smoker. Well, what do you want instead? Uh, I don't want somebody who's too skinny or too fat. You know, well, what do you want instead? 
you know, what, what are your values? What, what do you value? Who yes. are you that you want to share your life with and, and find a, a suitable uh, a romance partner for you? You know, because if you say I'm looking for, you'll always be looking. In other words, Paul is saying, you know, I'm putting all these flags around. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm imagining being in, you know, in Amsterdam because that's where I want to move to. So it's kind of like he's living in Amsterdam in his imagination while he's taking the physically taking up space elsewhere. Live in your imagination, fostering and having and delighting in the kind of person you want to have. And that's when you become a magnet for that person. Oh yeah, and and also on my it's fun because on my green screen also, not when I'm doing my auditions, but when I'm doing um, like a twelve thirty I'm in class, I have my background, my visual background is the inside of the interior of a jet, and I picture now because I I shot a scene in an episode years ago at Dorval where the private jets land and where the the terminals are. So I already know, I picture myself going there. I picture myself boarding the plane there. So now it's like, it's funny because I feel with the private jet that I moved forward, that I'm attracting it more and more and more easily. It happened a month ago, but we're not with the right guy. And I'm going to picture that I'm with the right guy, very, very highly gentleman guy. And, uh, yeah, I understand I, now, but at least the energy is moving for the private jet, so that's good. So, okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Rex, for coming in and supporting, redirecting, reframing the opportunity as always. Um, welcome, everyone. Excuse me for my voice today. I do apologize. <clears throat> we are in Rex's Life on Your Terms Exceptional Club, and as we know, everyone is going to be turning into a house eventually. So um, do still click this green house, this little green button uh, house at the top here. Uh, so as things continue to shift and move on Clubhouse, you'll always be able to find Rex. And what we're speaking on today is how to stop getting what you don't want. So we just heard from that excellent illustration, the reminder for all of us what this particular focus is the words our intentions and how to get things that are different we have to change don't we so i'm reminding everyone please do sign up for rex's exceptional newsletter at www.rexsites.com it is absolutely wonderful it gives you information it's intentional it's purposeful you also get a free gift that when you uh, get the newsletter and a whole bunch of other things that are attached to it. So please do that now, go to www.rexsites.com. And I wanna welcome again and thank everyone for being here today. But invite yourself into that opportunity in listening actively now, what are you going to do? What has inspired you? What do you imagine that you can do either differently, enhance, expand, whatever that is that will move you forward? There's so much beautiful opportunity in this moment, isn't there? So I just want to excite and be excited by all of these opportunities. So I love to come to Kaveri, my lovely friend, what have you heard today? What are you feeling compelled to, to share about the focus, how we focus, not on hitting that wall, not on aiming on what we don't want, but what we do want? My lovely friend, what are your thoughts? Over to you, Calvary. First of all, um, I think I wanted to say hi to everybody in this room, and it's so nice to be among friends. Um, but I loved how uh, Rex stepped in uh, and I don't want to make this about uh, Mark or anything, but I've shared so many rooms with Mark. Uh, and I just love how Rex said to Mark that uh, you have to be the person you want to attract. Um, and if we're not there yet, you know what? It, it's okay to be by yourself for a few years longer until you find the right person. I mean, I'm saying this because I'm on that journey. I'm not about to... Um, settle. If I'm not that person yet, how am I supposed to attract somebody um, 
if I'm not there yet. So uh, thank you, Rex. Uh, that was a great uh, Saturday morning um, clubhouse room, I guess, for me. Um, and I just wanted to say that, uh, yeah, if you're not who you want to be and you know you're attracting all the wrong people then maybe it's time to kind of take a step back and uh, spend more time with yourself more self-love and uh, figure out where you want to be before you move forward uh, my two cents for saturday morning thank you sandra lovely to see you oh lovely to see you Kavri, and thank you i want to add to that uh, opportunity in this moment and please everyone hey stanley please feel free to come on up and share um, I still invite you to go to www.rexsykes.com, you know, click on that beautiful newsletter. Um, you'll also get access to this uh, wonderful blog post that we're just speaking about and in our shares today. So the words have so much power, don't they? An opportunity, what I have found very helpful is to stop and then choose easily choose different words and how I'm going to speak has helped me to redirect away from hitting that darn wall and focused purposely consistently in that right direction and if I fall off I focus on my words I'm focused on how I speak I'm focused on observing myself and observing others because you know what I'm doing? It's such a powerful tool is that I have joined up and this is, I'm not paid to say this, but I'm just telling you from my heart to your hearts, if you want to truly change easily, just like that, shift your perspective, shift anything, re-anchor yourself, delight in any moment, come and join us. Come and join us in the NLP training program. This online program, whew, I practice every day. There's a new opportunity to be able to shift anything and all things, my outcomes, how I listen, how I engage the words that I use. And with curiosity and opportunity, I am becoming it. So Calvary, you are so powerful and so correct. We're on this beautiful journey. Why not make that journey just so delightful and so interesting and knowing that all these opportunities, we can shift, we're not stuck. Sometimes it can take time, but it doesn't have to take time. We just have to be open. And thank you everyone for being here. And so I just really wanted to honor and that just spoke from my heart to your heart because genuinely, you can't change. You can. Just got to make the choice. And with consistent, repeated, right action, you be it. And then you do it. And then you have it. Be, do, have. It's aligned to Napoleon Hill. It's aligned to all many exceptional principles. Connect to your heart. What I use every day, connect to my heart, to my mind, to a higher calling and consciousness. So I just love being here. I love being of service. Rex, I have such greatest gratitude for this moment. So let's open this up, Paul and Murad. We haven't heard from you. What are you called to today? How are you stopping getting what you don't want to how you're getting what you do want? Murad, I'm not mm. sure if you're able to come off mic. If you're yeah. driving, if you're able to I'm share. Here. Thank you, Murad. Yeah, morning, everyone. Yeah. I mean, uh, first of all, I mean, I am very grateful uh, to the things I have. And uh, I don't talk about or focus on things I don't have or don't want, you know, because it starts from your conversation, uh, not only with outsiders, but also within yourself. And uh, so the whole idea is to be aware of that little voice inside you. What is it saying to you? And and when you see if it's saying something negative, immediately replace it in the end with a positive note and be very, very grateful because we celebrate everything and every moment and every conversation and be as much as grateful you can be and just manifest and keep focus on laser focus on what you need. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, over the days, uh, throughout the whole day, I'm very, very mindful of what I need and what, I, what I'm uh, trying to attract. And there's a thing where we have called the process and the result. 
So the whole idea is in the process. And people sometimes don't want to go to that process. They're looking for shortcuts. And life is not about shortcuts. And you just have to go to the process and do it honestly and with all your heart and passion. Because what you become in that process will count. And do it so well that by the time you're looking for the end result, you become the result in itself. And you're like moving on to the next result, you know. So that is my share for right now. And um, thank you, everyone. And hope everyone is doing well. Mm. Thank you so much, Murad. It's always beautiful. Share. And we're bringing this positive energy. I want to invite, again, the opportunity. If you are attached to a bio and socials, come on up and share. We'd love to hear your voice come and share what is you know what have you heard what resonates for you how have you been able to stop getting what you don't want you know that's that's the key we can just stop make the choice today so i want to return back to paul you know i want to paul let's let's dig into this wonderful article you know there's so much around the intentionality of words. Do you have any powerful words that really ignite, excite, expand in your world? Because you are the master in marketing. Because I think this is still relevant because people may ask, how do I reframe? What words can I use that will delight or expand or engage differently? So let's open this up. Again, we'd love to hear from others. Please also go to Rex at www.rexsykes.com, get his newsletter, read that article, and then come on back in and share, you know, what are you going to do today? But I think we can take a little bit of time now to explore the power of the words that we use to direct our mind in a positive, affirmative, for a forward thinking way, if I may. Paul, what are your thoughts on that? If you're able to come off. Yeah, I'm reminded of that old joke. The doc, guy goes in the doctor's office. And he says, what's wrong? It hurts when I raise my arm like this. What should I do? Well, don't raise your arm like that. It's that simple. If you don't want something, stop looking at it. If you don't want something, stop thinking about it. If you don't want something, stop talking about it. It's that star of the negative, feed the positive. And if you increasingly feed the positive, there's a wonderful side effect to this. I've noticed in my own life. And you know what it is? It feels great. Thank you, Paul. That is an important piece, everyone. I'd love to come to, you know, Deanna and Mark and Maraud, uh, Rex, of course. Let's continue to invite people in because I really do feel that there's so much powerful opportunity for more people to be here in that moment because we need to feel it differently, don't we? Just imagine what it would look like. What would it feel like if you were so beautifully powerful in this moment? You stood in your power right here right now what would that look like what would you feel how would you stand how would you breathe <sighs> just imagine this moment now hmm. what if you could do that in any single moment just command your mind command your mind your beautiful reprogrammed subconscious mind to deliver all that you need in any moment just like that you can you can feel wonderful it's in the feeling the beautiful moments of feeling the richness the, the even the curiosity of that moment which will then what? Help you change. If you feel wonderful today, focus on a color, focus on maybe the rain coming down. What can you feel 
It will give you that wonderful feeling. What can you speak that will support you in a new direction? These are all things that we can do in any moment. And I've learned many and different and unique and wonderful new tools that you too can. Please do learn, lean in, take the opportunity to choose you. We only have one beautiful gifted life. Why live it less gloriously? Why? We don't need to. We can choose today. Step in, step towards, move forward. Just release and let go. Yeah, maybe perhaps for you today, it may just take that one breath, that one step forward, changing one word, going within to say, I can, I will. And then you move forward. So please reach out. Reach out to Rex's amazing programs. They work. They're so powerful. He has over 40 plus years of masterful mind design, the NLP. There are tools that you can bring into your life that will fundamentally change it. It really does work. I just felt compelled to share that because I'm able to live my life so beautifully, wonderfully, abundantly manifesting because of these new tools. I shifted from someone who was externally focused, who was numb for 34 years, everyone, 34 years, focused in my mind, not understanding. And this is a key thing for all of us. We all have a journey. It's not about my journey, but what I've learned to release and let go of releasing all of those ways of being, releasing, not understanding the emotions, the emotions within me. But when I awoke to it, I released these things. I learned to repattern, reprogram absolutely my subconscious mind. How? I took the step. I made a choice. I wanted to change. And I did enroll in Rex's ultimate NLP program. Anna consistently, repeatedly, every day woke up with gratitude. I read his book, Life on Your Terms. And yes, I had a very successful career leading up to this. But what changed, what changed is I stopped focusing on what I didn't want, but what I wanted to. I became, I focused, even if it wasn't physically in my peripheral, I saw it. I shifted myself. And I became so much more self-aware, emotionally intelligent. I did so many other things that now I apply in all that I do, the work that I do. I am it. I became it. I'm still becoming I just wanted to share that. We all have this beautiful story, this journey. Just be this absolute best version of yourself. Why live less than glorious? Why live feeling stuck? Why live feeling burned out when we don't need to? Get control today. Begin now. It's so powerful. You can, within you, be so beautifully rich. You have the resources within you. We just have to remind ourselves that they're there. And Rex teaches us how to go within, to pull out that reframe, repattern, redo our beautiful timelines. And guess what? Woo, we're powerful. We can. We are. I am share because generally from my heart I practice every single day easily all of these tools so I just wanted to share that and I thank you all for listening letting me share because I am not that woman that I was before I'm happy abundant joyful and just living my life so wonderfully well because of all of this all of you and having connected with Clubhouse with Rex and with all of you with that, I am grateful. I'm connected to my higher source. 
And it's just such a beautiful place to be. And I really invite all of you in this invitation. Just feel beautiful. Feel the richness that is the all possibilities in these moments. So thank you, Paul. Enough of me chatting and sharing, but I just wanted to honor this. Thank you. Thank you again, Rex. I am truly always grateful. You know, I've loved hearing that because, you know, it reminds me of Earl Nightingale in The Strangest Secret. He says, most people, if you stopped him on the street and asked what your goal is, you wouldn't get an answer from most people. I love when people ask me, so, Paul, what are you focused on? <laughs> it's true. Set your focus. Be intentional. Who are you? What do you want? How did you get there? Become the source. This is what Rex is. He's the source. You're your own source. So how are you going to be resourceful today? Go back to that blog post, www.rexsykes.com. Sign up for the newsletter and ask yourself, how are you speaking to yourself? What are you saying? How are you going to shift yourself away from that wall? Pretty easy. Just take the action. Begin with a simple action today. Make the choice. So I think this is just a wonderful opportunity for, for us to connect. And I'm inviting again, please do take time today and love to have you up on the stage. Hi, Rosalind. Hi, Peace. Thank you, Sladjan. Jane, Amher, Stanley, Michelle, I hope I said that right, beautiful friend. Please feel free to come up and share. What are you hearing? What is speaking to you? How have you been able to stop getting what you don't want? That's what we're talking about today words, actions, thoughts. So I'm going to turn it over to Paul and Deanna, Moran. anything else coming up for you, beautiful friends? Well, I'll just have one more thing because I'm actually ramping up my own emotions right now. So you're, you're all forewarned. I love when people ask me what I'm working towards, what my goal is, because I tell them emphatically, and then they inquire, well, what led you to that? Oh my God, it's a torrent of certainty and power. And I could tell them, you know, I, it's like a celebrity when they're in an interview for like a new movie. Uh, sometimes they can sound pretty mechanical because they're saying the same things over and over again. Oh, the director, the cast, my co-stars, it's going to be great. But every once in a while, you can see the actors, if it's their hundredth interview, they just catch that spark of why they wanted to do it in the first place in the way they speak it. And when people ask me, but that torrent they get from me, everyone's always impressed and they're very, very happy. And I can always usually tell there's some kind of a little thing going on inside them that's asking, wow, I wish I felt that strongly about something. That's a really cool thing. And you know, one way you do it is repetition and interesting new repetition. Like for instance, at RexSykes.com, I wonder how many people here regularly, regularly, predominantly listen to the attitude activator audio because if you I regularly do. listen to that I yes do. yes okay i know you do we've talked about that and the thing is <clears throat> i'm selling this hard right now because when i've got like maybe an hour between important things i spend that 40 some odd minutes with it because if there's anything in me <clears throat> that isn't positive that is holding on to something that's a little low it's like a Zen samurai sword just slicing through those silly, stupid paradigms. And when it does that, it, it's just such a wonderful, relaxing thing. First, it shakes it up, it breaks it apart, and then it just gets better and better and better. It's For me, it's just absolutely wonderful. And I think it's got a universal appeal that probably could help everyone in some times. But that feeling, I just don't know how to press upon you, that feeling of focus and certainty and absolute positive obsession for the life you want to live and focusing on that and only speaking that like even the simplest questions someone says paul where are you located i pause and i say well you asked my body is in st louis but my mind and my heart is in a particular block of a particular street in amsterdam and then do they ask more questions they find out how deep my passion is and the thing is whatever you want do it the same way. Do it your way. There are tools available. Go to RexSykes.com. There's a massive kick-ass one available for you right there when you join. 
Mm, thank you, Paul. And, you know, the beautiful gift we can give ourselves, and I want to go to Mark, Murad, or Deanna, if you're able to share your experience. What ways have you been able to bring in those goals, those new ways of being since joining Rex's clubhouse room. Because these are our testimonies. These are ways where people can actually hear how you shifted, how you've become even more resourceful, how you're intentional in that positive, affirmative way. These are the gifts we can give because for some people, perhaps, maybe you, maybe not you, you say, well, oh, that's them, that's not me. But we're all beautifully gifted with this opportunity to live this abundance. So I'd love to hear from you, Deanna. How have you been transformed? What are you doing that's different, that's positive, that can be of value to someone else, perhaps who may need to hear from you today? How have you been able to transform so that you're getting more and all of what you want, not directed to what you don't want? Miss Deanna, are you able to share? Not sure if Miss yeah. Deanna, there's Miss um, Deanna. Yeah. Well, you know, with my superpower of curiosity and my bright light of gratitude, and just saying yes. Um, so just, just rolling through all all of the things that cross my mind, all of the 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 things that come out of my mouth. I'm able to just roll around and you know look look at them. I wonder what belief that is attached to and evaluate just look at it as at, you know I don't have to work at it I don't have to dig it up I don't have to try even I just like hmm, notice what I've said and then think about what belief that is attached to and then do you know is that is it even mine do and even if it is mine do I want that anymore and just gently, kindly rolling with that curiosity all day is just absolutely fantastic. I love that, mm -hmm. Deanna. Curiosity. And I love how you're doing it easily and gently. That is so mm -hmm. beautiful. And, and the beliefs and, you know, challenging yourself, hey, just, you know, in a nice, wonderful way to challenge yourself in how you look at things. That's the beautiful gift that I find perspective, our ability mm -hmm. to look at ourselves from within to without, to shift. That is so wonderful. If there are any power words that you love, that it can help perhaps some people here today around getting started. Mm. I wonder, I wonder, and Rex's, the directed questions were really um, a, an excellent shift. So wondering, wondering, and then just saying, saying yes, because the, the more I said yes to gratitude, the more um, the forgiveness and trauma healing just kind of rolled into the, like they just rolled over each other so gently. And, and I found so many invitations to just be more specifically curious, but just as gentle and just as, as uh, it was, is fantastic. So it, I, the invitation, accept the invitation from the universe to say yes to whatever healing is available to you because yes, <laughs> you deserve all of that energy to be freed up for fantastic things. 
Oh, uh, thank you. I'm going to jump back in, son. Yes, thank you, Rex. Wonderful. Paul and Deanna are doing, and as mods, I think you deserve a big round of applause and love and everything, each and every one of you, for being here when you are. And the days that you're here and the time that you spend is truly valuable to me and to all. So I appreciate it. And, and most importantly, I hope it's valuable to you. So um, thank you. Mm -hmm. I operate on a couple of basic premises. And one is the notion you can teach a person to fish or you can fish for them. But if you teach a person to fish or if they discover how to fish for themselves, they're out in the woods, they're starving, they don't know what to do. And they begin to think about what do I need to do to survive? You know, how do I get some food? There's some fish or there's some birds or there's whatever. There's some plants. What do I need to do? How do I do it? What can I do? Um, they start moving in the right direction. I operate on the principle that, and it's not always true, but if you had to work for your first car or, or get something that you really liked or valued or your first iPhone and you had to put in this, the the transfer of energy and effort and money in order to get that, that you probably value it a whole lot more than if it was given to you. Um, because you know what you went through to do it and you know what you paid for it and you don't want to have to do that again if you don't have to do it. So, you know, more people seem to be dedicated to that which they acquire, whether that's a, a thought, a feeling, a skill, a, 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 an item, whatever it might be, if they actually had to do something for it instead of get it. That's why this is not a self-help room. This is not a an Ann Landers advice column. This is not a let's just talk the, the topic to the death. It's about what do we implement? What can you implement? Because when you can figure that out, when you can discover for yourself what you might do differently, and when you attempt to do different things differently and apply them, now you're unlocking your own potential, your own resourcefulness and, and, and looking for and finding uh, potential opportunities that might not have otherwise existed for you. They were there, but you just couldn't tell. Now, if, if for example, someone says, you know, Rex, I'd like to do your course, but I can't afford it. The very first change that person needs to make is either stop BSing me or themselves and say, I don't want to do your course or I would if I had the money, but then the the point is you go out and you get the money. That's the first fix you need to make. Just like if you're out in the forest or out next to the river needing food, what do I need to do to be able to do this? If you really want something, you know, if, if like Paul is talking about living in Amsterdam in his imagination, it's an obsession, it's a, it's a desire, it's something that he wants, so he's, he's actively putting into the steps to make that happen. And then there are those people who go, I would like that. I'd love to do it, but 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 if I had the time, but if I had the, you know, whatever. And and so the, the thing to hear is your first statements, your first reservations, your first doubts, your first, if you want to do something, why aren't you doing it? I mean, think about that for a second. I would love to live in France, somebody says, or Italy or Rome. Why aren't you there? Why aren't you doing something to be there? If you want it, why aren't you, why aren't you acting? Well, because, because, because and they have all the excuses and all the reasons and all the stuff. And you know what those are? Thoughts. They're thoughts. And those thoughts squirt chemicals and hormones and neurotransmitters that produce feelings. And those feelings either mean I feel like doing it or I don't feel like doing it. If you sit and wait and wait and wait and never do anything, you never do anything. You just sit and wait. It's not going to magically change. This is the key. This is the thing about habits. Habits don't just evaporate. They can change through drama or tragedy or, you know, some where you, everything is pulled out from under you and you have to kind of reconstruct, you know, breakdowns, that kind of thing. People go to the bottom and then they rebuild themselves. They have a crisis, you know, and short of that because you know that's going to happen anyway if it's going to happen but you know I, I don't teach people to go into crisis and break down i share with people i'm teaching by the way is, is just the absolute wrong word we're sh I'm sharing principles and then whether you learn them is up to you when people come into my program so one thing about the program is that i can put them is that i can give them exercises i can coach them i can troubleshoot we can adjust and continue we can do q a's we can go back and forth they can get 
you know, directions. And then they have to actually do the directions. They have to do it. And they do it under my guidance or, you know, my awareness or my staff, you know, that kind of thing, where we're looking at and, and making sure that they're getting what they're, what they're attempting to do, or at least that they're on the track. Short of that, to sit and, and to think about it does nothing. To sit and talk about it does nothing. The point is it's experience that matters. It's the experience that matters. Paul earlier said about the attitude activator. People know about it and they don't have it. That's fine. You know. But those who do understand the value or the benefit of listening to it and using it because they experience it. And they experience learning the process for themselves so that they transform themselves. The other people who don't go, well, I wonder if maybe someday. Well, it'll be someday, you know, or if, or as they say, someday never comes. So the point of, of and the purpose of anything is, is in order for you to have learned to crawl, no one sat down and said, okay, so here's what you have to do. First, you have to figure out how do you, how do you, you have to decide that you want to move. So uh, let's, let's work on your right arm right now. Decide you're going to move your right arm. Now, if you're an adult and you've been paralyzed, as my friend who I write about in Life on Your Terms, Jamie, was, this is the very thing you do need to go through. Okay, go ahead and attempt to move your right arm or your fingers. Put your attention there. Remember what it was like. Use that muscle memory. Use those things and, and continue to do that. And then they work the muscles and they, then there's a process that people go through. But as an infant, nobody sat down and said, okay, put your right hand out and now move your left knee and now your right knee and now your left arm and, 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 and move forward. You, they had to do it on their own. They had to figure it out on their own. And while it's genetically wired to do that moving, so is everything in life to some extent. We move toward what we're attracted and we move away from what we want to avoid most often. Some people live with a lot of what they don't want because they don't understand that if they want to get away from what they don't want, they have to do the moving. And if there's nobody around to tell them how to move like they're out in the woods, they've got to figure it out. So, you know, we can say we become a very lazy species, just a terribly lazy species. We want other people to solve it. We want, you know, the fast track. We want the quick fix. We want the magic, you know, whatever is the magic bullet to kind of solve this thing. When the bottom line is, if you want to eat your food, you have to chew it. Or at least you have to put it in your mouth or put it in a tube. You have to ingest it in some way so that your body can process it and take the nutrients and eliminate it. And that's what life is about. The same thing, that's why you go into a workshop. So you can take what you can get, use it to have the experience and eliminate what you don't need. Or release what's been holding you back. But it, it doesn't just come from the thinking of it. And when I say the thinking of it, thinking is the first step. It's the first action you have to take. You have to change your thoughts. I'd like to do that. Well, then do it. Well, but, but see, in other words, it's not a big enough need or a big enough desire or a big enough want, or they have too many reasons why not to do something. Why aren't you doing this? Well, because, 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 oh, it's their, their fault or that first or the banks or the government or, or I don't know. I just have this thing about me. I keep sabotaging myself. Change that. I can say this, and this is what people don't get and they don't like to hear it. You are exactly where you are because you are exactly where you are because of your thinking and what you're willing to accept. There's no reason you aren't further ahead or further behind than that it's your complete and utter doing. You're either allowing the bank, yes, the bank may be foreclosing, but your reaction to it, plenty of people who the bank forecloses on, but they don't illegally do something. They rise to the occasion and go, you know, if I'm going to save my house, or I'm going to do this, then I need to do something. And they change their thinking and they change their feelings and they change their speech and they start doing stuff. And then there are other people who just live, well, they're taking it away and I don't know what I'm going to do. You see this on the news all the time. Two people in, the, in one neighborhood lose their homes. One person goes, oh, I'm going to rebuild, no problem, you know, just junk. And the other person is crying about how devastated they are that they'll never be able to recover. 
nothing's wrong with either of these people that can't, you know, the person who's crying and saying they never recover. The only, the only reason that they're crying is they won't recover is because they haven't figured out yet how they could be different because they think along the same lines. They're not bad people. They're just not thinking what they could be doing or, or they're thinking about the problem and not the solution. They're thinking about what's wrong and not how they can now move ahead. Some people, like I said, some people go, God, I'm so glad that my house blew down because heck, it was just junk anyway and I was trying to get rid of it. And this storm came through and took my house out. Now I don't have to even bother. You know, and I'm insured. You know, I mean, so you know what I'm saying? Is in other words, attitude really is everything. Your attitude towards yourself, your attitude, what you can do, what you're capable of, who you are. Because remember, who you are, you have behaviors, right? What is a behavior? You itch, you scratch, you fart, you sneeze, you know, you blink, you move, you react, you know, put your hand on heat, you know, you have an automatic response, you have things that you do. Then there's those things you're capable of, and you're capable of all of those mostly, not always are those you know, um, conscious, like blinking, you can intentionally blink and you can sometimes invent, can, you know, intentionally thwart blinking, but it's very difficult or holding your breath, but you have an involuntary nervous system that takes care of a lot of stuff. So apart from that, you are capable of, for example, most people are capable of learning to read and write to whatever degree that they do. Some say, well, I have a learning disability or I'm dyslexic or I have HD. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. It's that's whatever. You're still able to learn. You're able to learn that you have ADHD or that you're dyslexic. You can say it, maybe not spell it, but you can say it. So somewhere in you, you have the ability to acquire information about yourself and the world and other things, but you also have the ability to change things. So you may not be a good writer or you may misspell things, but you have the ability to, to say right. You have the ability to, to learn to walk. That's a behavior too, but it's also an ability. You're capable of walking. Some people aren't. So you're capable of running. Some people get really good at running and jumping and skipping and, you know, and they do athletics and sports and performance. They become capable of those things. They weren't born with a basketball in the womb coming out, you know, in their hands, spinning it on their finger. They had to develop the, the capacity to do that. So you can learn to do just about anything if you get the stinking thinking out of the way that says, I can't do that. I don't know how to do that. I would do that, but someday I will, this, that, and the other. And that you, this is why Hill says, until it becomes a white hot obsession, until you clarify what it is that you want positively, I want this, and develop a, a certainty, a passion, that I'm going to have it, I need it, I want it, this is mine, and that I will do it, because you're not going to do it. But if you can conceive it and believe it, then you can achieve it. But again, the caveat is you may not because you won't do anything towards it. It's up to you whether you will or you won't. And what does he'll say that you need to do in order to become this person that you want to be, who's certain that they can have it and who will make their dreams come true and persist no matter what? Auto-suggestion. Meaning the repetition, the routine repetition, the daily experience of directing your mind and your feelings and your words and your behaviors in such a way for long enough time that you can make that change. And some people do that alone. And some people do that with coaches and guides and mentors and training and, and courses and all the other stuff. But the point is, is if you want to do something, whatever is stopping you is only a thought. And if you're gonna let a thought stop you, you're gonna let a thought stop you. You're gonna let a little mental packet of energy prevent you from doing something that you say or claim or feel that you want or need or, you know, you must have. You're going to let an excuse keep you from the very thing that you think might make a difference. I've been, you know, helping, training people worldwide. They fly into me or I've been to them, you know, for over 40 years. I've heard every kind of excuse. I've seen every kind of issue or problem maybe not all of them, but certainly so many. 
And you could categorize people if you wanted to. Oh, here's another one of those. Here's another one of them. Here's another one of this. Here's another one of that. Here's another one of that. You could do that. It's not, it's not fruitful necessarily. And I don't do that because the way I look at it is if, if babies of all colors, of all nationalities, of all genders, of all time have learned to do things and grow up and become adults and make their life and their dreams come true, than any other baby could. And I don't want to be the person to prevent them from doing that. I want to be the person that can help them to do that. But I don't want to be helping in an interfering or unhelpful way. If you took your child and walked for them, put them in a walking machine, which they do with paralyzed people. I mean, they have different things, you know, it depends on what's going on. Um, they aren't learning the, the neuromotor activity that's necessary to do that on their own. But there may be reasons for doing that with an infant, you know, or a toddler. But the point is, is that you can't, there's no substitute for the person doing it for themselves. Because nobody can get inside your head unless you'll let them in. Kind of like vampires, you got to let them in, you know. And what you've let in, for the most part, what people let in are the thoughts and the limitations that other people had around you while you were growing up that you adopted as your own. And now you think they're yours. And guess what? They are. Because you've entertained them and perpetuated them and practiced them and, you know, gone through life with them. Now, if you want to be different, guess what you do? You change those. So if you say, I want to do this, and your first thought is why you can't do it, that's the first thought you need to change. And you need to come up with all the reasons why you want to do that and all the reasons why you can do that and how you might be able to do that, what you need to do in order to make that happen so that you start doing what it is that you want to be doing instead of living your life saying, well, I'd like to do that someday, maybe. Living from the feeling of the wish fulfilled means you live as if you already have it. How do you already have it? You would have had to get it. It didn't magically happen. You would have had to have gotten it. If you live from the feeling of the wish fulfilled, your brain can then kind of reverse engineer how you got that. This is an incredibly spiritual process. It's an incredibly intuitive process. It's outside the range of most self-help guru kind of stuff. They tell you work hard and sacrifice and do these things. And if you build a better funnel, you'll have a better this. And if you get a better ad, you'll get a better that. And if you, you know, get a better oven, you'll be able to bake better cakes. It's not, it's not that. It's that when you organize your thinking and your, and your energy and your feelings and your words and your behaviors around something that's truly important to you, your brain and the universe conspire to bring it about. You broadcast it, you vibrate it, you attract it, you create it, and you get downloads from your own subconscious mind. Because your own subconscious mind is that communication with infinite intelligence. It is the universe. It's the, the storehouse of all of your experiences, good, bad, and right around everything. You know, the things that are never forgotten, but not necessarily accessed when you need them because you don't use them. So they're often some like filing cabinet drawers that you never look in. But once you start activating your your thinking and your brain and your processes, everything starts to speed up and vibrate. And now you have greater access to all those, the, that great storehouse, that great warehouse, all the vast resourcefulness, opportunities and infinite potentials inside your own brain. And you begin to find those things, those opportunities begin to present themselves when things become important, when things get energized, when things vibe high, you unlock and unleash so many potential talents and abilities and skills and capabilities and behaviors and thoughts and feelings that serve you that you don't when you're in your everyday ordinary experience of excuses and blames and whines and complaints. And that's what I share. And that's what I help people to do is to get out of their ordinary lackluster, I can't do things and into I can do anything I put my mind to 
attitude and have them get those kinds of results, whether it's in their health or wealth or romance or whatever it might be. Because until you do something about it, you do nothing for it. If your boat is heading off of the Niagara Falls, until you stop and say, I need to steer in a different direction, you're just going to go right over the falls. That's that's the where you're headed. And I'm not saying that that's, that's your life. I mean, that's an analogy that I don't want to. You know, say, oh, well, everybody's heading off Niagara Falls. But the point is, if you're heading in the wrong direction, you're heading in the wrong direction. The only way you he head in the right direction is to turn around and head in the right direction. If you don't have what you want, understand this. You've created where you're at, and you'll continue to create where you're at until you stop creating what you don't want about it and start creating what you do want instead. You have to take responsibility for where you are. If you're headed toward Niagara Falls in a boat, you think, well, I'm really on an island in Tahiti and everything is well. You're wrong. It's not. You're in a boat headed over Niagara Falls. Accept that. How did you get in the boat? Well, I got in the boat and I went down the river and I got caught in the rapids. And it's your, you got on the boat. It's your responsibility. You're headed toward Niagara Falls. Own it. Don't blame the boat owner. Don't blame the lake. Don't blame God. Don't blame the falls. You're in the boat. It's your doing. Now take responsibility and turn the boat around. And someone will say, well, I'm, now we're caught in the rapids. Which that's not that easier said than done. Okay. Yeah, it's easier said than done. That's a good thought that you can now change. Because if you're sitting there heading to the falls, you go, well, it'd be easier said than done to turn the boat around. And you're just going to keep heading to the falls. What, what good is that? You have to be aware of when you're conning and cheating and lying and deceiving yourself into being less than you can be. And start taking the appropriate thinking actions that can unleash you to be everything you are already, but that you haven't yet been, but could be. It's up to you. So join me, get the newsletter, hang out here, join us in a class, but most importantly, change your thinking and change your life. And with that, I pass the mic. Wow, thank you so much, Rex. Powerful as always. I love when I'm able to be here live with you, relatively, as I say live, because it's live for me to hear this in person, not on the replays. Thank you. Greatest gratitude always. And I hope you have also been ignited, uplifted, whatever it is for you. Powerful, wasn't it? Take it in, make a decision today, choose. What is it that you're going to do differently? What was in that message that resonates for you today? So much opportunity. All right, let's do a quick PTR, a pull to refresh. We are in Rex's Life on Your Terms clubhouse room. Soon all those clubhouse rooms will become houses. As we know, things are changing. So please make sure that you're going to come with us, hit that green house button. And so when these things do change, you'll just come right along with us. And today, as always, a reminder, go to www.rexsykes.com and sign up now for his newsletter. And within that is the blog post, so much greatness. There's free gifts in there and it's free expand all those opportunities so do it now also i want to honor rex in the book we don't talk about it enough i love it life on your terms go to amazon pick up the book is another tool you can use every day it's a masterpiece i have it right by my bed and i read it all the time so much opportunities to support yourself to learn to change easily, choose that now. So much opportunity. And I want to thank all those who are in the room. Hey, Amber, thanks, Jane, for being here. Slagin, Stanley, Christine, Irona, Jim, Antoine, Fatima, and Money. Thank you again for being here. Thanks for the action takers. I love this. And thank you, Shamim. I hope I said that right, Shamim. 
Uh, I can do all things. Thank you so much for your words. Thank you for those who are in the chat. Thank you for those who have shared across, excuse me, I'm losing my voice, that share across on Twitter and Facebook, all those great action takers. I very much appreciate that. We're doing this again as this community, we're elevating and igniting. Hello, Miss Jameen. Thank you for coming up. I hope I said that appropriately. Yeah, so Shameen, you got it right. Shameen, thank you. So what is what is your heart called to to share today? Thank you, Shameen. Oh, I, yield I my was mic. just <laughs> sorry. I mean, I apologize. I was just killing time before I got into Zoom. <laughs> so, um, actually, I saw Amir here, and I thought, oh, well, where is he at? Let me just get in there. So I just came in just a few minutes, and then I got called up on the stage. So oh, I, love I just it. accepted it. <laughs> well, you know what, Shameen? Let's let's do this because I want to honor that you know I, I i've known Amr for a long time i'm canadian i know he does some amazing wonderful things so i'm in vancouver british columbia i love your bio and i love that you've done the inner work so in listening i'm not sure how much you heard from rex about you know about purposefulness about you talk about union how have you been able to be successful in all that you do so that you're able to get what you want, not what you don't want. Is that helpful? Is that Absolutely. a beautiful opportunity? Thank you so much. You know, much. even when I was growing up at home, you know, I would come home with a problem and I would tell my mom, she would tell me, <clears throat> are you sure you're not seeing what's already inside of you? <laughs> I thought, this is my mom. How could she talk to me like this, you know? And then she would send me, to get on my knees in the closet and ask the Lord to show me what's in my heart and show me those things that are not of him. And I'm telling you, almost every time I would get on my knees, I would be bowled over in tears. I don't know what was happening, but I knew something was taking place on the inside. And the thing is, when we are walking in love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and humility, you know, those qualities make you a magnet for others, you know, and that is what you will attract in your experience. So the whole thing is about becoming the person you want in your life, you know, becoming that person. And it, was, it wasn't that easy for me, you know, it was a long process, but it worked and I am so thankful that I took the time to allow that work to take place on the inside, allow that transformation to take place on the inside because had I not gone through that, I will not be who I am today. So that's, that's it. Oh, I love that, Cher. Thank you so much. I mean, it's so true, isn't it? It's always the choice now to go within, to then transform without, from within to without. It's so powerful. And I love how you're walking in joy and light and love and that connection as we transcend to that higher calling consciousness, if that so is on your path. It's a beautiful share. And I love that, you know, Amr was the heart came up and, and I know Amr is not able to be here, but he's such a lovely man. and and. Thank you so much. And again, we welcome all those onto the stage. And hi, Christine. Please do feel free if you're ever able to come on up and just share. Today, we're talking about how to stop getting what you don't want and reframe that to say, let's get what we do want, what we're delightly, divinely, the opportunity to have, to live with abundance, live with love. So much beautifulness. All right, wonderful, Paul. I'm gonna come back to you for a moment, my friend. I do need to sign off at 10. I want to honor this wonderful room and I wanna thank all those who are here. Hey, Renee, um, please do always come in every day, the invitation, 8.30 Pacific. Rex is here with his team of exceptional mods to come and share. I'm always delighted on the weekends to be able to do that in the mornings. So wonderful, Paul. I'm just wondering, or Deanna, if you can take the helm as I need to head out to a family event. So we're just going to pass the baton to whoever can do so. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I can do that for a little while. I've got an appointment with Act uh, Attitude Activator before a big client Zoom. But yeah, I can hang for a bit.
Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you again, Deanna and Rex for this wonderful opportunity to ignite, to change, to truly stop, just stop. Just know you can stop, make the choice today. Redirect your beautiful mind, reprogram it, repattern it, begin with gratitude as we've all learned from Rex. Begin with gratitude today. What is new and good? What am I going to do today? I'm taking this and focusing on the power of my words. I'm gonna excite myself through the gratitude activator and continue all that I do each day. So thank you so much everyone for this wonderful opportunity to be of service Rex and to be here with you and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you everyone, over to you Paul. All right, in the time we have remaining here, just keep it simple. What are we trying to apply? Remember, first it's an awareness that we know we can change, then set an intention that we will, and then to apply. Let's keep it simple. If there's something you don't like, don't look at it. If there's something you don't like, stop thinking about it. If there's something you don't like, stop talking about it and feeling it. Figure out, what you, <clears throat> figure out what you want. Look at that. Think about that. Feel good about that and behave like that. If you do it or you don't, it's up to you. And the more you do the positive, you will starve the negative. The more you do the positive, you will starve the negative. You may say the negatives are all around me. Fine, fine. Then close your eyes and think about what the best is. Star the negative. Feed, 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 feed the positive. That's what it's all about. You either do it or you don't. Like Rex says, <coughs> we can't make you do it. You have to want it and then just do it. And there's a lot of ways to get there. Because what you want is personal to you. Feeling good, even though it's universal, it's personal to you. That's why the book is called Life on Your Terms. Your terms, my terms, our terms, each one of us, our terms. Just make the decision. Set an intention to look for something new, inspiring, and good in the rest of your day. Because we find what we look for. And if as you look, you see something you don't want, Look elsewhere. That's what it's all about, folks. Anyway, um, I know, Diane, unless you have anything else, I mean, really, this has been a good room and a lot of good uh, energy. And, of course, remind everyone, replays are on. Yes, you're in a clubhouse room where replays are on. Why? Because you know how clubhouse works. In an hour or so, or half an hour after the room closes, you'll get a notification that the room you're in, the replay is available. What do you do? It takes about 20 something seconds. You open up that replay, the room starts playing from the beginning. Don't worry, just hit share as if it's a live room. Share it, share it, share it, and then leave the room. Just spread this stuff to the world. Spread it to your friends, invite friends for the next time. It's easy. So, Diana, any burning, burning realizations you want to share? It's on fire. <laughs> nope, I'm good. I'm just even grateful for, uh, I'm grateful for all of it. I'm grateful for the wondering. I'm grateful for the nudge. I'm grateful for reminders. I'm grateful for all the amazing people holding energy in here. I'm fantastic. I am complete. All right, well, just the last time, make sure everyone here has tapped on the greenhouse. Make sure you mm -hmm. can follow when we turn into uh, the actual houses on Clubhouse or whatever. Make sure you go. <laughs> yes, <laughs> make sure you, we all have gone to Gratitude Activator to get the articles. And remember, the, the beauty of getting the articles is it doesn't matter where you live or what your sleep patterns are. You'll have a chance late at night or early in the morning to read it to yourself first to really increase the power of what you can take away. And then rexsykes.com. 
join there. Get the newsletter. The newsletter is something different than the articles. The newsletter is a more personal uh, poking inside of you to do something, which I really enjoy. And then access to the attitude activator where you can listen and be different. And you really can because it's amazing. Do it. Please do it because I want this world to be better. And if more of you do things like this, the world will truly be better. And I'm going to live a long time. So I'm going to enjoy every bit of it possible. So Yay. thank you in advance. One more request, if you don't mind, please go to the Rec site Life on Your Terms Club page and you will see about halfway down invite members. You can think two people that you follow that follow you to bring to the club. That would be fantastic. Yeah, because this is the good stuff. As I say in my most brusque terms, this shit works. It really does. And if you're here and you're listening, that's good. But make sure you give too. And you don't have to give by joining the stage. Give if you hear something worth listening to. Share it to the world. You never know whose life will be changed by sharing something. That's what's beautiful. You never know. But if you believe someone will benefit from it, that's the point. And just share, share, share. Spread the word. All right, well, I'm going to get ready for uh, ramping up my positivity for a big, long client Zoom this afternoon. And uh, like I said, attitude activator and some fun movement and focusing on all the things that I really want. It's part of my way of living, and that's why I like my life. So unless anyone's going to stop me. <laughs> we forgot to do, Dinah. We forgot to laugh like Errol. undernamer. If Errol was a Dutchman. I love it when you do that. That's so funny. Well, thank, you for, <laughs> thank you for being with us today. And I will count up from eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, celebrate everything.